Hello and welcome back to Learning Computer Applications in Architectural Design. This video is going to address the topic of using curves to generate surfaces. And we're specifically going to be looking at the loft command. So in Rhino, um, the tool loft comes from the boat building world of lofting, where in order to generate uh, the shape of a hull, a series of curves are drawn in section uh, that are then distributed across uh, the length of the boat. Now those curves are used to cut profiles or shapes um, of wood, uh, and those create uh, the, the profile curve or the profile shapes in uh, in wood. And then those are then skinned with the material um, to create the hull of the boat. So when looking at these drawings, you'll notice that they're very similar to an architectural uh, set of drawings where you have a section and then a variety of plan or, prof or uh, elevations. So in this case, uh, take a note of the grid that underpins this. This is the scaffolding, it, which allows these drawings to work together um, to, to generate form. So in our, when we think about architectural production, we think of it in the same way. So let's look at developing a scaffolding. Um, so here I've drawn a grid in plan and two elevations. In our axon here, we can see that uh, this nine square grid forms a box. So why don't we start by looking at uh, generating surfaces with open curves. So here I am uh, in uh, open curves and let's go into a let's go into a view. So we're going to look at the right view and we're going to draw a series of curves in this space. I want to make sure that my project is on and that my control point is in the right spot. Uh, so in this case why don't we we do a series of curves that moves its way up the frame. And let's do it one more time. Let's sort of see if we can follow this in a sort of similar way. And lastly, let's sort of change the shape of it. Okay, so let's move these. Now we have to distribute these curves in space. So let's move them from their off of their construction plane across our scaffolding. All right, now we can turn our scaffolding off since we've generated our curves and let's take a look at um, the loft command. So firstly, um, I'll type up here loft and I'm gonna, it wants to select the curve. So the order you select loft matters. So if I get them out of order, uh, I, can, I can generate some weird things where the, the loft actually doubles back on itself. So let's try this again and let's do them in order. Okay, so we'll, when we loft, a option menu uh, pops up, and this helps us determine how to fit a surface between our curves. So the first thing that we're asked is to determine a style. Now, a, what's important here is um, whether or not you want to develop your uh, surfaces or if you want it to generate a single surface. So if we do straight sections, for example, and we preview this, uh, you'll, you'll notice that um, at the control curves, uh, there is a break. So the, the the surface will break at those control points and, and they can this can be used to generate edges. If you do a, a, a normal and you preview this, then it tries to make a single surface with your loft. Um, and we can do split of tangents, take this off. The other the next thing that we're confronted with is um, the cross section, the align curves. So what this does is it helps you uh, make sure all your curves are going in the right direction. For example, if they're misaligned, uh, it could look something like this, where the start 
and end of your curves aren't the same throughout. So all you have to do to change it is click on these nodes uh, and it will shift it back. And so we can see that all the starts happen in the same place and all the ends happen in the same place. So this is good for generating um, correct surfaces. Um, surfaces that can be uh, produced in a, in a physical world um, as opposed to impossible surfaces which fold back on each other or intersect itself. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is uh, how, to what degree does our surface fit in our uh, control curves. And this is what, um, if we do, do not simplify, um, what it does is it brings up um, the curves um, pretty tightly. If we rebuild our surface, what it's going to do is it's going to um, rebuild the surface with a series of contours uh, that approximate the curves, so that they're, they're off a little bit. Uh, and you can change the degree. For example, the lowest degree is a 3, and let's do a preview. And here we can see that the the surface has a, a lower responsive, or is, doesn't respond quite as, as tightly to the curves. Um, and it sort of creates a more um, smooth shape. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, we can jump up to like 100 and preview this. And here we can see that it is uh, very tight. So when we rebuild curves, it is also important to help think about what you're using the surface for and how much um, editing is going to occur in this surface uh, afterwards. Uh, so in this case, let's do do not simplify, uh, preview, and let's hit OK. And here's our first surface. Uh, why don't we move this out to the side uh, and let's look at, let's compare it to a different way um, of lofting. So here we're going to select our curves and we're going to loft it. Uh, and this time, let's, let's rebuild our our surface with a hundred. Uh, make sure that this is normal and hit OK. And we can move this over and let's loft one more time uh, and make sure that we're selecting them all in the right spot. And here let's do straight sections uh, and we're going to select do not re rebuild uh, and we're going to go OK. Okay and now we're going to move this over and let's take a look. Okay, so the first thing is uh, from a plan view, we can see that our normal, so this is uh, normal text, normal rebuilt. And this is straight section. And let's align these. Align the bottoms. Great. All right. So when, when, we, when we look at this in a, a perspective view with a shaded, we can take a look at these surfaces a little more carefully. So here are the normal. Um, if we want to edit this surface, uh, we can easily type in points on. And here we have a series of uh, control points which we can push and pull or, or alter if we need to edit our surface. Um, and we also have it fitting pretty closely to our control curves. Um, in our normal rebuild, however, uh, we can see that uh, it's a little tighter. So if we type in points on, here we, we see that we have uh, much more fine control points at work. And this, this will allow us to, um, it will be more difficult to manually alter these curves, but at the same time we have greater degree of accuracy 
uh, with the rebuild. And then finally in the straight sections, um, you'll notice that this is for, if you want to manufacture or um, sort of fit together multiple surfaces together, this is useful because what you could do is it's instead of a, a single surface like these are, uh, this is a poly surface. It is a collection of surfaces. So you can explode this and it will split up the curves or the, uh, the into the, excuse me, it will split up the surface in, into a series of smaller surfaces determined by our original control curves. Okay, so that, that should do it for looking at open lofts. Uh, why don't we move over to looking at closed shape lofts. So let's change our layers and let's turn this work off. And let's go back to our base construction plane and turn our scaffolding back on. Okay, so here we are. Uh, let's go back to a four view. Make sure that we are in our extents and all of our views. Um, and in this case, I want to uh, look at creating some shapes which um, are, are, are closed using closed curves. Uh, so in this case, let's look at, why don't we make a rectangle? And again, I'm making sure my control point is on. Um, and then let's do a um, let's do a polygon. Okay. So here's so we're gonna go from a um, rectangle to a hexagon, and let's generate some curves. So let's tween between this. And this, and make sure our tween is correct. Okay. And how many do we want? Why don't we choose a bigger number? Why don't we do? Uh, well, I guess I guess five is okay for this, so that'll work. Okay. So here I have a series of uh, curves I've generated, and they interact with these points, so that's good. Let's turn my scaffolding off. Now let's loft these. Uh, so let's, we're going to use the same command loft, and we're going to choose them in order. And this is making sure that our seam is correct. Uh, so if we move this maybe like this, um, Okay, so that looks all right. All right. Uh, let's take a look at a red color. Okay. So here, um, if we do normal and we don't simplify, uh, we don't want to hit closed loft. What, what, what closed loft means is it will take your surface through your series of curves, and when it gets to the last one, it will try to connect that surface back to the first. So don't use closed loft in this case. Um, but let's look at a way of creating a, a solid, uh, a different way of creating a solid. Okay, so first is uh, loft uh, normal. We're not going to simplify. We're going to say OK. And here's our shape. When I click this shape, it is a poly surface, meaning if I explode it, it is a series of smaller components, smaller surfaces. So we can do undo. Um, so if we want to make this a solid, what we can do is type in this word cap. And what cap does is it will take the end curve, the start curve and end curve and make a planar surface there. It will try to close off the object. So here we can see that we have created a solid. This is a um, a closed object with a an exterior and an interior. Uh, okay, so let's let's move this out to the side. Uh, let's do let's move that up. So we'll do fifteen, and let's take one more look at lofting between these curves. Um, 
And here I can change where my seam occurs. Uh, let's And what I'm what I'm trying to do is see if I can change how the seam runs up. And we can see there's a difference in how it generated those surfaces um, based on where those seams are. So what it's doing is it's your your seam is uh, creating a a curve that moves through those points, and then it uh, it uses it to loft around. In, in, in this closed surface. So it's in a way it's automatically creating a, a closed, or it's automatically creating a profile. And here, why don't we look at uh, the straight section this time, and we can do a rebuild. And if we do a preview, uh, we, we see that there's a, a series of sort of more tight curves, and let's do okay. And let's move this up to 15. OK, so if we type cap again, um, it closes it. So if we were to develop this, or if we want to change these curves, we can explode, explode it. And here we see the the sections are a series of section curves. Now within each of these, of course, we can, um, if you want to make them solid or not, you, you can. But again, it's breaking. When we rebuilt it, it's creating a an even set of surfaces, um, and here they are uh, broken up by uh, section. So where where our section curves were. Okay, that is looking at lofts, and we will continue with other videos of different ways of generating surfaces. Thank you.